flight test crew. Today we're looking at the Blade 200 QX and matching at EFC 721 HD camera. These items were sent to us by Stephen Parado over at Horizon Hobby. As you may recall, we met him earlier this year at AMA Expo. Well, let's take a look. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the inside of the box. The little Leatherman here and open the tape there. Okay, and here we go. First thing, manual and a couple Allen wrenches, a couple of extra screws for whatever I'm sure, and a wire. Let's find out what that goes to in a second here. And there we go. There is the actual unit itself. It's Pretty small, actually. It's stuck in the box. There we go. That is that is tiny. <laughs> That's really something. It's like a little micro quad I built a while ago, but like cooler. Well, let's put that down. Here we have charger and let's see. Charger plug-in. This is a prop nut wrench. Looks kind of big for that. Oh, I see that side. Aha! <laughs> we have our landing gear. That's probably what the screws are for. A small battery. This is a two cell, 800 milliamp. And looks like some extra propellers are in here. Take a look, see. Oh, oh, you got a whole set, so you can you can crash the whole thing once, and that's it for the box. So let's go on to the other box then. So this little box is the camera, and on the inside of that we have needs to be charged before operation. A little tiny. Oh, look at that! A little plastic housing, just a small little HD camera. Huh, very cool. A little lens cap on there, it looks like. It includes the, looks like charger, probably you get the video off of there also. I do not, has a place for a micro SD right there. Which it did not seem to include, so I have to get one of those. So Velcro, a little mounting adapter for it. A uh, servo lead, probably to trigger it or something, I assume screws, and a book, which is about the same size as the camera, or as heavy as. Well, very nice. So that's, that's that then. So let's get to assembly and take a look and see how it works. So I've been thumbing through the manual here. It's actually quite well written. It's uh, pretty right to the point. It gives you some nice little diagrams. Uh, tells you information about where the sticks, what they do, has a nice exploded chart of all the pieces in case you break something. It's got, which my, actually my favorite part is, assuming you have a bind and fly, it has the parameters for different radios. So if you have a DX6 or a DX5, a DX8, you just, it tells you what switches do. So no guessing there. It tells you exactly what to set them up, what to reverse, and you're good to go. So decent little book. So I want to charge this little thing while I'm assembling it, and I found this little cable here and what it was for. This is an adapter for the charger for this battery's balance lead. So just right like that. And this end into the charger. And then of course your DC power. And I'm gonna go charge this battery now. Okay, this should go fairly quick actually. All we have to attach is the undercarriage essentially and the camera. So let's do the undercarriage first. A couple of little screws here. And little Allen wrenches for this. So, pretty straightforward. Little pegs go in little holes. <laughs> and that's it. Just a uh, little screw. Allen wrench. Okay. okay, nice and tight, not too tight. And let's put the other one on there. Again, our little holes up. And that's about it, really. There are two Allen wrenches here. One of them has a, is smaller than the other. I assume that's for something else, a little tiny screws to take them apart. So the bigger one is for the gear here. 
Okay, nice and tight. And perfect. This is a little bit awkward because the torque required to move it, put it on here requires you using it like this, and you can't turn it around and around and around, so I'd recommend a better tool than this, but this works. And next, the camera. So, the camera mounts this little plate here, and the plate mounts to the aircraft. Now, they included some Velcro, which actually isn't used for this aircraft. It's actually used for the 180QX. So, if you have one of these, you can use this cam with it. It'll mount just fine at the bottom. So, first thing, I'm going to insert the SD card first, so it's easy to get to. Just click that in place. And these little screws that were included are number zero Phillips head. So, put those there. A little screwdriver. This appears to be the front of this here, so that mounts to the camera like so. Then insert your screws. Okay, we're all tight there. So those screws are all nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. Now, I did notice that on the aircraft, it looks like the wire attaches between these two, kind of below where the camera mounts. So, I want to put that on there first. Now, it's labeled, actually. It's got the ground here and signal there. It's also labeled on the camera. So it makes it nice and easy. And then, wind it up the same way. Just like so. And then two more small little screws to hold the camera in place. Okay, camera's all mounted here. And it makes a little door, it looks like it opens for the battery. Perfect. And a GST. And next we're going to set the radio up and bind it to this. Okay, so it's always a good idea, regardless of the size of the aircraft, to remove your propellers before binding or messing with the computer or radio or anything else. So. One observation here is there are silver and gold nuts. The gold nuts, when you're taking them off, turn to the right, clockwise, and the silver ones are counterclockwise, like you expect. So that is a nice feature, actually. These won't come flying off by themselves. So binding is pretty straightforward. Simply just plug it in and set your radio for binding. Okay, so just plug it in, and you should get blinking blue lights. Wait five seconds. Transmitter bind mode, and turn it on, and it'll bind. Give it a few seconds. The light should turn green. There we are. We are bound. Let's put the props back on and go flying. Okay, so before we go flying, this is actually my first chance to get my hands on this thing. Tekkenstein's been hogging it so far. And I have to say it's small, but it feels really solidly built. I like it. So it's going to be fun to see how it flies. Let's get that going. All right, for safety, always make sure you turn the radio on before you power up the aircraft. All right, so I think the little aircraft is really excited to go flying now that we've got it powered up. But I just want to take a quick second to go over the LEDs. First, you've got some LEDs to help you with orientation. You've got two red ones in the front to match the prop colors, two green ones in the back to not match the prop colors there, and the light in the center here, which is green right now, tells you what mode you're in. Green is the most stable mode, where it allows you to make the least aggressive inputs to the aircraft. You've actually got two switches on the radio here which control the mode. This one here changes between most stability and an alternate mode. So I flip this up right now, that takes it into blue, which is sort of an intermediate mode. It allows you to make more aggressive inputs or makes the aircraft less intrinsically stable. And then you use this switch to change back and forth between the two alternate modes, which are the less aggressive and then full on acro mode, which would allow you to completely invert the aircraft and do all that crazy stuff, which we never do here. And the last mode I want to show you so I'm going to secure the aircraft here. I'm going to turn the radio off. And as you can see, the light is a blinking blue light. So that means you've lost communication with your radio for whatever reason. So I'll go ahead and turn this back on. Light turns back to its previous color and we're ready to go flying. In order to start the aircraft, the manual says take both sticks to the inside and let them return to center. That doesn't seem to be working exactly as advertised. Observe. So 
So as you can see, that doesn't seem to work at all. What does seem to work is moving the throttle stick side to side quickly. Check it out. One thing I really like is the throttle cut. You push this button and the throttle stops spinning immediately. There's a reason you might not like that on a big camera ship carrying a $50,000 Red Epic, but on something like this, it's brilliant. Push that button, the motors stop right now. All right, so she's flying, flies well, full throttle, uh, puts plenty of climb on, like that. And right now I'm using the, the most stability mode, the position with the green switch. And uh, she's a little bit laggy doing that, but I mean, this I imagine is intended as a trainer to get start with, so she won't do any hard maneuvering at all. She's really slow and graceful. And uh, that's probably good also when you're thinking about using it as a camera ship. Now I'm going to push it a little more away from me and put it in the less stable mode and we'll see how that works. All right. Wow. As you see, she can make some pretty aggressive inputs in this mode. There is uh, no shortage of power or man no shortage of power or maneuverability here. Uh, so it's a pretty potent little aircraft. Now, if you choose to move it over into full-on manual mode, that's gonna be like your old GU-344 on the Gowie 330X. If you input this, it's just gonna stay there. So you're responsible for balancing it out. No accelerometers online at all. So take care of that mode. All right, it's got one more feature we've discovered. I'm not gonna tell you how, though you'll probably figure it out on your own. And that's what we're calling the crash recovery mode. If it goes in hard, it starts beeping regularly, the LED turns light and start blinking to help you find it, and it won't power back up. You can't start the motors again until you disconnect the battery and reconnect it. So, interesting feature. Here's how it works. For our final aircraft performance test, we wanted to see how long it would fly with the stock battery. The manufacturer's specifications said it would last between 5 and 7 minutes, and we got our first low battery indicator at 7 minutes and 24 seconds. So let's see how the camera works now. We'll just let this roll for a few seconds, so you can make up your own mind about the quality of the video. The two things that jumped out at us were the jello effect caused by a rolling shutter and vibration in the airframe and the watermark which is included in the video file. So if you buy a little camera, make sure you get the right kind of cards for it. Now online it said it would handle up to a 32 gig card. We tried a couple we had laying around for our Mobius and our GoPro 3, they did not work. It actually took pictures and stills, but not video. Now went to a local store, picked up a couple of these things. One is of high speed, one's a little low speed one. They both were great. There's no problem at all with video or stills. Okay, so I'm gonna go over real quick how to access the camera from the radio. It's currently bound to this switch here, and to take a still photograph, you first turn the camera on, it's in still mode. You just toggle back and forth, one photograph taken. And just keep doing it as many times as you want. You wanna switch from camera to video mode, down for four seconds, then back up, you're in video mode. Same thing, start, and then stop. To verify the camera is either taking a still photograph or recording video, when you flip the switch in still mode, it'll blink once. Flip it again, blinks again. When you're in video mode, if you toggle it, it blinks on and off while recording, and then back to solid when you toggle it again. One weird thing that happened during our testing is that when Lucidity first tried starting the aircraft, it wouldn't start no matter what he did. So waggling the stick started the aircraft, but that's not how it's supposed to start. Every subsequent time past the first, like I think two times, doing this starts it normally. So not quite sure to make of that, but just so you know. Okay, so now we're gonna do one more thing for you before we go. Out of his apartment, Tekkenstein managed to bodge this thing together out of parts he already had on hand. It's a little FPV rig. And we're gonna attach it to the bird and see how she flies in that mode. 
However, between you and me, I just think he's looking for another excuse to wear those Sky Zone goggles. I think he wears them to bed. It flies! Put FPV on. Oh! <laughs> well, yeah, but can you do it backwards? At the risk of grinding off of... our own faces. I mean, a tortoise? You nuts? Stay on target. Stay on target. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 so do I get to try it? Yep, we're going. Goggles on. I'm feeling quite as saucy as you. Whoa! How saucy you feel? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Remember the kill the throttle thingy? <laughs> Perfect! Woohoo! <laughs> Whoa! This is actually a fun little FPV ship. <laughs> it is. That's great. If you'd like more information about the 200QX, look for a review in an upcoming issue of RC Sport Flyer magazine. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe. What do you think? Magazine launch? Sure. I'm going to trust you. <laughs> <laughs>